welcome. So today I'm I'm joined by um, by a couple of guests who are not in Colorado, right? These are um, some re uh, referral partners out of Ogden, Utah. Right. Now I got connected to Corey and Rhonda because I had a, a friend of mine that needed to buy in Ogden, Utah, and and we'll get into his story a little bit unique there, uh, as he wasn't even living in the country at the time he needed to buy a home. Right. right. So so presenting some unique challenges in, in the market that's absolutely there. Um, you know, similar similar challenges to what we're seeing here in the Denver area. So um, Rhonda, Corey, I'd, I'd like for you guys to introduce yourself. I'd like to hear kind of in your own words, your, your background um, and, and how you ended up um, getting into real estate. Okay. I'll let Corey start. Sure. So, <laughs> so originally from Michigan, uh, the Upper Peninsula and uh, when we graduated high school, I went into the military. I was active duty for uh, 21 years. So we left there and traveled all over the world. We did quite a dip. I mean, we could talk about that for hours. So just kind of, <laughs> that's, that's what it is, right? We were active duty for 21 years. And um, and then we our last duty assignment was here at Hill Air Force Base, which is just outside of Ogden, Utah. So that's where we decided to retire out of and uh, then we decided to get into the you know real estate at that point okay yeah cool so yeah i'm sure you know 21 years in the military there's a lot of stories to to share and um as of late i've just gotten into some books written by uh some folks in the military just finished can't hurt me uh and an oh, interesting yeah. story there from david goggins and yeah. his journey so so rhonda how about you tell us uh, your background so um, when Corey and I got married, we were 20 and I followed him all over the place. So finished my degrees and then I've had various various jobs. Um, my last job before being a realtor, I was an auditor for the Air Force. Um, so I did that for a long time. Um, and then when Corey retired, he wanted to get into real estate. And I'll be honest with you, I really didn't want to do this full time. I didn't know a lot about it. So I said, you know what? I'm I'm pretty happy working on base and I like what I do. So you go and do that while you're retired and I'm going to stay over here. And that didn't take very long. I started helping him a little bit and then got licensed because there's certain things you have to be licensed in order to do. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I resigned from my job there and then I've been doing this full time ever since. So right about the time that I, I resigned from my position with the audit agency, um, Corey took over as the team leader of our local market center. So he did that for about three years. And then when he stepped out of that role, we just became working full time as a team. Because as you know, as, when you're a team leader, there's not a whole lot of extra time. So that was mostly me. And then when he jumped out of that, it was great because then we can do this together full time. And that's been, let's see, you retired nine seven, eight years ago, nine years ago. So yeah, so that's been great. Yeah, and for those that are that are watching the video and, and not familiar with with the team leader role, um, really kind of tasked with growth of the office, with helping agents mm -hmm. grow their business. Um, you know, think of kind of general manager of um, of a business, right? But specifically of an office location, uh, a lot demands on that uh, on that position, and it's it's truly one that uh, that takes a lot of strong leadership talent. So. Um, and, and from what I was reading in your bio, uh, Corey, right, it actually helped kind of grow uh, the productivity out of that office it, during your time as the uh, team leader. That's correct. Yeah, we, we went from about 80 agents to 100 and about 150. And uh, okay. yeah, there's a lot to do with training, coaching, recruiting, you know, all, there's, a, there's a whole lot of fun stuff that you take care of when you're in that position. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so, and, and, you know, as we talk about real estate now, I'm, uh, seems like one of the rare, I'm a Colorado native. I was born and raised here, um, you know, born in Denver. And, you know, I, I hear a lot of my friends and people that I know complain about this real estate market we're in and just, it, it all has to do with legalized marijuana. It's all pot and that's the cause, the culprit of it. Um, you know, and these potheads need to go home, right? Some, some people seem to be a little bitter about that. Um, my perspective is it's, it, that's not actually what's caused this. In fact, as a little kid, I remember, uh, you know, hearing my grandparents and my parents talk about, 
the people moving in from out of state. It's, it's mm -hmm. just always been a transplant state. So your market there in Ogden, Utah, isn't much different from what I understand. We're seeing uh, so. rapidly increasing prices. And, and tell us a little bit about what's going on in your market there in Ogden. Oh my goodness. Well, um, in the last, I've really seen an increase. It's It's been years, kind of like building, 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 yeah. building but this is exploded just this last couple of months. Um, we had, it's interesting, the, the clients that you referred to us were from Germany. We had three people from Germany in a row. So we were kind of helping them all move here. And, and I can tell a difference from the people that closed in February to the people that closed in April. I mean, it's changing every month. So to give you a couple examples, um, just on our listings, we'll have 20, sometimes 20, 30 offers on a listing. We put an offer for a buyer the other day. We were told they had 40 offers. So it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with legalized marijuana because we're in Utah. So it has absolutely nothing to do with that here. I think it's a huge, you know, it's a combination of low interest rates. Uh, so many people moving here. That's another thing that we've noticed with our listings. When we're going through offers and just from talking to the other agents, they'll mention my clients moving from, we've had people moving from Illinois, a lot of California, a lot of Idaho, Virginia, Virginia. Actually, we've had a few. few so from Texas. Yeah, it's interesting, but yes, the, the demand is just unreal. So yeah, pretty crazy. And, and, Right to, to recap, you said 40, that's four zero 40. offers on, on one I, property. I did hear of um, a property in Salt Lake. I was not party to this transaction. We were not one of the offers, but I heard there were 96 offers. So I can't wow. even comprehend the agent having to go through those because we're, when we go through our offers, we've got a very detailed spreadsheet. We go through all, all sorts and it's, it's very time consuming to go through all those offers and take in, you know, everything into consideration. So I can't imagine. Yeah. 96 or whatever. It's really time consuming just to do 20 or, or 30, <laughs> let alone 100. It's, yeah. That's nuts. So. Yeah. yeah to, to go through five is time consuming. Right? Right. There's, there's a lot of pages to the contract. I'm assuming in, in Utah it yeah. is here and a lot of details to go through and gosh, and overwhelming for a seller and for a buyer through that. It really so. is. And I think the reason, you know, every month we're seeing an increase because I've seen comps on certain properties go up 40,000 in two months because the neighbor sells and that happened to go 60,000 over, that's the new comp for the new neighbor that wants to sell and it just keeps going. Um, in addition, when a, when buyers are out there and they get beat by putting in these crazy good offers in the normal market, they would be crazy offers in the normal market and they're not even in the running, they get even more aggressive the next time. So you can tell the buyers that have been in the market for a little while because they know I need to put everything I have on this on this offer in order to get it accepted. Yeah, and, and we kind of feel that from the agent that's representing the buyer too, right? right. That phone call when they pick up and they're like, Please. we're just tired of playing the game. Yeah. How do we make it stop? Yeah. yeah. So so for those that are watching, if you're discouraged about the market, how it's going here in Denver, uh, Ogden, Utah is not worldly different as far as the market. Um, and, and I'm just going to throw this one out there, jump in without a safety net. So if you don't have the exact number, uh, that's okay. But ballpark Average home price in the area there in U Ogden, Utah. Um, just in Ogden, I know Weber County off the top of my head. Um, average or median? Well, I can tell you this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can tell you this. When we started um, in 2012, it was 165, okay. and now we're seeing properties three bed, one bath going for 340. So, not even. You know, we've got a lot of buyers that first want to move here and they say, I need a two car garage and I need a fence yard and I want two and a half baths. And then they see what's out there and they're like, oh, OK, I need to reevaluate here. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sticker, it's sticker gone shock. Up. yeah, it's gone up um, different pockets, of course, but several different areas have gone up 20, 25 percent a year. So that's crazy. I think the average is maybe 15 right now. I'd have to double check the yeah, numbers, but I know sure. some places are, you know, upwards of 20%. So. And the previous three years was just about 10%. So it's, it's been a pretty upward trend around here. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things going up and, and moving fast. So um, now with uh, your production, right. And, and you guys help a lot of families buy and sell homes. Um, it's not just a, Hey, we, we help one family maybe a month. You guys are, right. are in it um, and helping quite a few people. Right. We were 80, 82 last year. So oh. we, we do help a lot of people and, and every single person, they're not just a number to us by any means. Every single person has a story and we know their stories and they're important to us. So it's, it's heartbreaking 
when we have these buyers that don't get their offers accepted. But the good news is we, and we tell our buyers this, be persistent, we will get you one. So. Well, and I think right off the bat, when when Rana, when you and I had a phone call conversation about my friend who is moving yep. uh, to the area, right, it felt that deeply on my side, right, that you guys care a lot about what's happening with your clientele, and it's not um, it's not just a transaction. This isn't a machine that's just moving forward. That um, that you really dive down deep into who they are, um, and, and you know they become really, I'm assuming, clients for life. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, the the people that you sent to us, um, he just texted me this morning, just asking a random question for, you know, things to do around the area and things like that. I mean, Mm -hmm. we, we were invited to their house right when they got here. I mean, things, we, we get involved in their lives. So it means a lot. Well, let's talk about Brandon's uh, story. So, um, you know, Brandon, I've known his family for quite a few years, actually, before I got into real estate. Um, they're, they're big into motorcycles and, and I was at, uh, at a Harley dealership here in Colorado, uh, at the time. And, cool. um, you know, him and I had a Facebook conversation and he asked, you know, kind of seemed out of frustration. He said, Hey, can you help me buy a house in, in Utah? And I said, well, my license doesn't allow me to, but I have, um, you know, some, some great folks that I can get you connected mm-hmm. to, uh, where specifically are you moving? And that kind of started the conversation. Um, <clears throat> And then come to find out through that dialogue, he had been kind of working with another agent that maybe got frustrated with the market, just kind of threw their hands up and, and stopped returning his his calls or, or emails or messages. Um, and, and that's unfortunate. So, um, you know, reached out to you guys and, and kind of shared a little bit about that background. But um, in a unique scenario, as he was stationed overseas, not even in right. town, right, looking for a home. So... So share with us a little bit about that that journey um, as you got connected with Brandon. Okay, so I'm a planner just by nature. So when Brandon called me and told me his timeline, I kind of choked a little bit and thought, oh my gosh, we need to get out now. We need to find a place because they have pets. They're coming from overseas. They really, and with quarantine, the Air Force, depending on the, the organization, sometimes they do have you quarantined for 14 days before. They didn't want to do that in a hotel. So I knew, okay, we need to get out there. We need to get out there quickly. So we had him speak to our local lender just to make sure that, you know, he was getting a great deal. We just worked with some great lender partners and she set him up and said he's 100% ready to go. So we started looking kind of funny. Um, there was a house literally across the street from us. I can see the roof line. So when that one listed, I sent it to him and he said, oh my gosh, we love it. I said, well, you guys seem cool. You'd be our neighbors. So we <laughs> ran over there. Um, we put in a very strong op- offer. I don't recall off the top of my head, but I think that one ended, ended up going for 50 or 60 more than asking. So we were beat out of that one. But um I was in such close communication with him. I knew his work schedule. He knew mine, even with the time difference. So we communicated mostly on Facebook Messenger. So he would send me a message. Hey, what about this house? What about this house? I would run out video. So I kind of got to know him and his wife just over video. And Corey and I would take him out. Um, and we kept. they were writing very strong offers. But again, we do have some buyers with cash and even if they're not all cash, some buyers do swoop in with, you know, half down or whatever. And the seller sees that as a stronger offer. So they end up taking that. So we got beat out. Um, but from an agent in my office, I saw that they had listed a, a property and it did need some work. And I was very upfront with him about that when we were walking through the house. I said, this one does need some work and told him about the area, videoed the neighborhood for them. And this is something we do a lot. We have a lot of clients that buy sight on scene. So that's something we're familiar with. Um, so kind of walked them through that. I wanted them to be comfortable with the process. And long story short, 15 offers, we ended up getting it. So that was super exciting for them. Um, and there were a couple hiccups along the way. Um, that property happened to have solar with a loan on it. And that just comes with a lot of red tape, for lack of a better word. There's a lot of going back and forth with the solar company. And we worked through all that. When they got into town. And actually what happened is he sent me a message and said, well, I guess when we get into town, we'll get a taxi and we'll just go to our hotel. And Corey and I were like, well, he said taxi. He hasn't been to the States in a long time. We were like, we need to pick him up. So I told him about Uber and Lyft. They didn't know what Uber was. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Tell him about the the airport. And it was really cool. I mean, just meeting them, I felt like we already knew them because we were already videoing with them and in such close communication the whole time. And I think the timeline, I believe we started in January, the very end of January, if I remember right. 
And originally he was supposed to be here the first week of March. So that's why I was like, oh my goodness, we need to get out there quickly. I think his date was extended a week or two, but he ended up closing. I think it was the day that he flew in. So he signed his paperwork, express mailed everything back. And I think we got it and they recorded the day they got here. So that was pretty cool. So that worked out great. They had to do all new flooring, painting. They're working on that now and they're just super excited to make it there. So that was they had to stay in a hotel for a few days because yeah. they had to wait for the people yeah. to get out and all that stuff. So it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But and they're pretty close to us too, actually. They're just a couple miles away. So yeah. And I think Corey met his parents even. He went over mm -hmm. there to kind of chat with them when the parents came into town. So that was cool. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was stressful because I take this, <clears throat> I lose sleep over these things. I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh my goodness, they're not going to have a place to live. We need to find something. We need to get out there. And yeah, if we, we were persistent and, he was persistent and we got him something, so. Yeah, that's um, it's so huge. And, uh, you know, my, my sister-in-law and her husband, uh, he's in the Air Force. They just moved back here from England. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, they did have to live in a hotel for an extended amount of time. And then it was an Airbnb oh, for yeah. months before they could move into their home. Um, you know, so to line up that timing is not an easy thing. No. And, and to be able to coordinate all of this there's so many moving parts that it's just, it's really amazing, right? Uh, a skill, right? That not everybody, not, not every agent can do when we take a look at the logistics on how we actually make this happen. Yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes things that people don't see. That's that's definitely true. A lot of moving parts. So, Well, what I've, my time in this, and, and this rang true with, uh, with my previous life in the motorcycle dealership, uh, it, when you're doing it really well on the outside, it looks easy, right. but there's a lot of things that are, that are going on in the background and, and Corey, I'm sure, right. 21 years in the military, being a team leader, I, I'm assuming, right. You could echo the same sentiment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There, there are a lot of things that go into a transaction. I know we, we broke them all down one time to go from actually making a phone call, the initial one, all the way to the closing table. And it was like 94 different things that we could think of that go into a transaction. Different tasks. So just yeah. to give you an idea of some of the tasks on the backside that people don't understand. Yeah. Well, and, and communication back to me was, was fantastic, right? This is okay. somebody that I know. I know his parents well. So always th that, that concern for me, right? When I when I put my name out on the line, I want to make sure that that's, yeah. that's going well. And, it's a reflection uh, on you, yeah. It was fantastic to hear the updates from you guys as to what was going on and the timeline for them. And, and it was really um, comforting to know that uh, we're, we're solution based, right? We're, we're seeing the problems that are coming up. We're finding solutions and we cared about the ultimate timeline and, and getting it done. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we thank you again for sending them to us because they're, they're special yeah, people to us. So cool. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, right? And, and want to continue that relationship. I don't always have people moving from Germany to Ogden, Utah, right. but uh, you know, <laughs> we're gonna go to... lately. Yeah, like I said, we had three in a row, pretty much. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah um, so when we take a look, just kind of at, at your real estate market there in Ogden, if we were to take a look at something you would want, um, you know, folks from out of state maybe to know or to realize, what are some really great reasons maybe to move to Ogden? Some cool things unique to to the area. Probably too many to list in this short time <laughs> period that we have, but um, just I'll take a few of them. Yeah. Um, so first of all, if you're looking to invest or if you're looking to do any of that kind of stuff, the, it's tremendous for that because our values are on the way up, right? So we're, that's a nice thing to have. Um, on a totally different note, recreation here is amazing. You can do anything pretty much in Utah that you want. You can hike and fish and hunt and camp and ski, Ski, <laughs> obviously, you know, there's just some of the best ski resorts in the world. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of everything to do here as far as that's concerned. Uh, I don't know. There's and for me, I mean, when we first moved here, Corey was still with the Air Force and we knew he had to do, I think it was a year or two until he retired. And my initial thought when we got orders here, we didn't plan on it. In fact, we heard Utah and I was a little freaked out for a second there. We came from Texas and I thought for sure, okay, we'll go here, we'll finish out his time and we'll go back to our house in Texas because I loved it there. We got here, I think it was like the first day or the, the second day I said, oh my gosh, I don't want to leave here. I absolutely love it. 
and of all the places we've been and really we could pick up and move anywhere and I would choose to stay here. So, I mean, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, the mountains are awesome. The yeah. people are good. The four seasons is a big deal mm -hmm. to us because we don't want, we came from upper Michigan where it's pretty much winter and a couple of days of summer. <laughs> so we're used to giant snowfalls and all that kind of stuff. And then we had the other extreme too. We yeah, lived in we Arizona, lived. New Mexico and Texas for years. So <laughs> I think we spent 10 or 11 years in the Southwest combined. So that extreme too, we love this because you, you do, like Corey said, you have four strong seasons here. Um, you know, and I don't want to scare people from the market either. I think when we have a new buyer, we educate them. And we're, we're very upfront. I had one buyer ask me, well, just tell me, just be honest with me, how long is it going to take me? And I think I told him, buckle up because it could be your first offer and it literally could be your 20th, yeah. but we'll, we'll get you an offer. And there's nothing we can do, you know, as a buyer, we just tell them how to present their strongest offer. And if someone beats us, someone beats us, but you have to go in with your strongest. Yeah. How competitive do you want to be? That's the most important mm -hmm. question. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so anyways, that's, that's a little bit about Utah. The, the economics here are nice too. They're a really great state for um, small businesses and that kind of thing. Lowest usually where they're very, best in unemployment and those kind of things too. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, the climate's in. pretty similar to the Denver metro area, right? We're not looking at extremes right. for humidity and no, right? no, no, hardly any at all. Hardly any. And then speaking of employment, the base has more civilians than they do, than it does um, active duty. So there's a lot of civilian positions there too. So, well, it, uh, it really does sound like a fantastic place to to spend, right? And, and I think if I were to talk my wife into moving anywhere, I couldn't get her to go any further north. Uh, maybe if we went west, Utah Just might be a west. consideration. Give us a call. Yep. She love it here. It's, it's a neat place, that's for sure. It's, yeah. you know, there's a, and there's a lot of old things to look at, too. People like historical stuff. This is where the railroads met and all that kind of stuff. So there's, mm -hmm. there's just, like I said, you could pretty much do an entire you know, show on things to do in Utah. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, you mentioned this and, and it's something that, that I appreciate because we, we try to do this as well. And it's not trying to scare people out of the market, but it is giving them a reality as to what's going on. Um, because if we're going to compete, we have to understand the rules that we're playing by today uh, in, in order to compete at that level. Right. Um, and, and certainly we, we, don't, we don't want to scare anybody away from making a decision. If you're moving from out of the country you need a place to live and, and staying in a hotel might not be the, the right. ideal. So buying a home right. is, is a good move. Right. Right. And we tell buyers too, you know, every once in a while you'll get somebody that says, Hey, I just want a deal in this market, getting a property under contract and closed is getting a deal. Right. Um, sometimes by the time you close, the values have already gone up. If another property in the, in the comp area has closed in that meantime, you know, so it's, and I would much rather just speaking from experience over the years, pay a mortgage than pay someone else's. I'd rather pay mine. And that's what we tell people as well. If they're coming here, um, depending on their price point, this may not be their dream home, their forever home, but it could be a fantastic investment. So as long as the market keeps doing what it's doing, that's our disclaimer. And we don't see a change in that. In fact, we see more demand as time goes on. Right. Owning real estate overall has proved to be a good investment, right? Whether right. that's your primary house or, or you have rental properties and um, you know, I think when we look at the value, somebody's net worth for somebody that's a homeowner versus somebody that's a renter, yeah. what, what a massive difference that that does. And how many options does that provide somebody to do something with later, right? Right. Whether it's a cash out refinance, a, a home equity line of credit, they can sell it, they can keep it as a rental, they can right. stay there and do whatever they want with it, right? Yep, they have exactly. more freedom. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, as we wrap this up, I think, you know, the last thing that I just want to ask is, you know, when it comes to your, um, you know, your partnership, your marriage in real estate, um, what would you like to share with, you know, those that are watching just about, you know, what it takes for, or, or what's unique about your situation there with real estate um, as it relates to your team, right? That, that partnership. Well, kind of like I mentioned at the beginning, when we have a client, like we take them on, they're not a transaction to us by any means. Like we take on their personal situation. Um, their timing is super important to us and we want to do everything we can. That's always in their best interest. So that's really what's important to us. Obviously we work together. We don't have um, real formal, we don't have a job description or anything, but usually what happens is it'll just seem naturally one of us will connect more with a client. 
And in this case, Brandon and I just started talking on Facebook and then just kind of went from there. Yeah. And every once in a while, Corey will have another client and they just want to call him all the time. And it's just, we're fine with that. We want the client to be comfortable and kind of whoever clicks with them is great. Um, we've got us and then we have um, John who works with us if we're unable to get to a property because that's another thing, time is of the essence. So if a property hits the market, we have a buyer that wants to see it, we drop what we're doing and we get them there. Even if the listing says, oh, we're gonna wait four days to accept offers, I've seen that change. So we wanna get them in and get the offer done right away. So we make sure that our clients are taken care of. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time. And I know that you guys are busy and productive and, and you have lives obviously outside of real estate. Um, but, uh, but I so appreciate the, the conversations that we've had here over the last couple of months is, is I've gotten to know more about you and, um, and jumping on this here with us. Cause I think it's, it's an interesting conversation for folks to hear about what's going on in other parts of the country and just hear, um, about the stories and, and the solutions that, uh, that we can help create for folks, um, you know, when, when given the opportunity. So, right. Well, thank you for asking us. Yeah. Much yeah appreciate we appreciate it. it. Um, so for anybody that's in the Ogden area, um, that, that might be watching, right. Is Brandon starting to get some friends if they're, they're watching, what's the best way for them to get, uh, to get in touch with you? Um, we have a website, Utah dream properties. We're also on YouTube and we can probably throw our number up yeah, there too. Yeah, yeah. You can call us and, or email us. It doesn't matter. Yep. Okay. More people do. So it's uh, Utah, Dream Utah Dream Properties. DreamProperties.com. Yep. And then Corey's number is 801-821-9400. Perfect. Um, well, again, thank you so much. I appreciate um, your time. And, and for sure, anybody that's heading out to Ogden, um, they're, they're getting, you're, you're going to be getting a call from me. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And same goes for you. All right, y'all. Well, you enjoy the rest of the uh, the week and, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Have a good day. Right. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Okay.